Okay, uh, good morning. Uh, let's get started. My name is uh, Jun Nakajima from Intel. Um, we've been working on uh, uh, KBM enhancement for OPNFE. And um, so we're very good at uh, you know, achieving a low latency, high performance. And we, we think uh, the kind of techniques or technology we develop for OPNFE should be applicable uh, to the general cloud and then that would help to build a real-time cloud. And uh, we also share some issues and then, uh, you know, that we experience and that's, I think uh, that'd be good uh, feedback or input to the architecture decision of uh, OpenStack. Okay, so agenda today is, uh, first of all, I do uh, real-time kind of one-to-one, -one, and then uh, talking about uh, use cases. And then uh, after that, um, talk about the software stack that you need to work on to build real-time cloud. And then uh, followed by the more uh, specific uh, setup uh, and the configuration for OpenStack. So real time is, it doesn't really mean it's fast, but it's about uh, deterministic execution. And in this case, the delay variation uh, is uh, the important. And there are two types of uh, delay variations. One is um, timing variation, for example, the delay from uh, expected events, for example, the time uh, alarm or time event, right, a timer, right? That if you see that kind of a, uh, different uh, delays that be called a jitter, and then uh, you really want to minimize to achieve real time, right? That's the timing variation. And the other one is uh, the processing uh, variation. For example, if some processing takes uh, you know, the 10 seconds. And sometimes the same processing takes uh, 15 seconds. Then you see the, the, time, uh, the you know, latency variation. That's not also uh, uh, real time. So you really want to make sure you, you see the deterministic execution. That's basically the, the, about the deterministic, you know, real time. And Sometimes real-time system often imply high performance. Uh, the reason is to achieve real-time. One of the effective way is to reserve system resources. I mean, like a CPU, memory, I/O. And if you do that, typically you get the good performance and high performance. And that's the, the implication of a. Uh, the real time, you know, the kind of consequence of a real time, okay. And in terms of uh, uh, the meaning of a real time, you know, different uh, meanings of real time, for example, hard real time versus soft real time. Hard real time means it's something you cannot, you know, the deadline you cannot really miss. If you miss the deadline, uh, you're gonna have uh, serious consequences, right? For example, um, nuclear plant, for example, right? If you miss that uh, deadline, that would be serious. I don't know what happens, but, uh, or medical system, right? On the ha other hand, you, you may have some, some, some kind of soft real time, soft uh, deadline, it's kind of guideline. And also the order of time, okay? You, you, are you talking about millisecond or microsecond or even like, uh, Nanosecond, that's you know, maybe insane, but uh, that kind of order it really matters, right? Okay, this is the first time I use this one, so it's a bit tricky. So, um, so in terms of the use cases, uh, like I said, uh, we've been working on a telco, you know, NFP uh, areas, so where it's a low latency, high performance is very important. Other area is like a financial trading system. And the 
IoT devices. This is kind of my uh, guess or a bet, but uh, you know, backend server for IoT devices, because uh, they, you know, IoT devices are not human, right? So you may uh, need to meet uh, more like a very sensitive process, uh, you know, real-time requirements for them. And then a highly interactive system. Uh, my son always complains about the jitter when the, he plays the multiplayer games, right? And for VR, a like virtual reality system, you really need to have a very high interactive uh, you know, response, right? Or the AR system. They should, I mean, uh, be popular in, in the future, right? And high performance system. Again, HPC is not really high performance system, but, I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> real time system, but one of the techniques uh, to achieve uh, high uh, real time, is, you know, you can use the same uh, technique to build a uh, high performance system because you, you deserve system resources. And uh, you also, you don't want to uh, over subscribe, uh, accelerate, or even virtualize uh, FPGA. Okay. So the good news is. Uh, we already have uh, kind of a real-time support in uh, OpenStack. For example, the, the bird driver for pinning guest vCPU to the host uh, PCP, physical processor you reserve, or you can reserve memory for guest RAM. Okay, you can do that today. And then also we have a good NUMA support to to use system resources more efficiently. And like I said, we've been working on OPNFE, and then as a byproduct, we have a real-time KBM. Okay. And real-time KBM can support both a virtual machine, real-time virtual machine, and also bare metal like a container. So you can run the containers, bare metal containers uh, in real time. So this is not really bad news, but it's kind of a fact I really need to point out. Uh, one is, the, basically this is a cost associated with uh, you know, uh, building a real-time cloud. In general, you need to have more hardware resources because you need to uh, reserve system resources. And this is actually what uh, Ironic is doing, right? Because you have a bare metal and where there, you, you don't do any uh, over subscri subscription. Okay, you just have a one virtual machine on a bare metal system. Okay, no uh, over subscri subscription. You, you don't run two instances of virtual machine on Ironic. Okay. The other thing is that uh, low, lower throughput caused by the scheduling. Okay. To meet real time, uh, you have to kind of reserve uh, system resources and then also in terms of scheduling, uh, the scheduler needs to aware of a real time thing. So sometimes you see lower throughput. Yesterday I actually uh, uh, heard that uh, at the, I think a Ceph optimization uh, session where they, get, they can get very high IOP. Um, but um, they see the uh, high latency. So it's possible. So when you, uh, when you achieve real time, sometimes you see lower throughput, okay? Then the mit mitigation is basically uh, make part of the cloud real time, okay? Not the entire cloud. So I'll talk about that uh, later. So now I'll, I'll talk about what kind of a software stack you, you, you need to work on to build a, a real-time cloud. Before that, uh, I'll talk about um, <clears throat> what kind of a software stack and how they can cause uh, the latency. So if you look at the software, system software, like a hypervisor, OS, or application, if the OS or software or the you know, hypervisor 
uses sharing over, over subscri subscription, uh, there's no way to get the real time basically. Okay. Well, there are some academic uh, guys working on uh, you know, very complex real time scheduling, but um, that's very complex. It's still kind of research level. So today, the most effective way and the simplest way is reserve system resources. I mean, the CPU, memory, and IO accelerators. Okay. Then also the code, code in the operating system schedule interrupt handling. Okay. If the code is not written with real time in mind, then also you, you see jitters or latency. For example, like a non-deterministic loops. If you don't know how many times that the code will you know iterate, then you cannot determine, you know, you cannot tell how long it takes. Or it uses a locks, right? It's hard to tell how, how long it takes, you know, the lock will be uh, released. And uh, there are also hardware issues. Sometimes, you know, the modern uh, system depends on the cache, right? If the hardware misses cache, then it causes, uh, you know, latency. Okay. So, now I'm talking about the uh, software stack and how they to achieve real time in the cloud. So as you see, uh, on the open stack side, first of all, you define flavor for real time, okay? And then Nova configuration, okay? With that, uh, you can reserve system resources. Then we, 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 from our experiences, you, you can achieve Millis, uh, millisecond of a uh, real time, okay. So this box, this box right? yeah, this one, right? Millisecond of a uh, real time by just using no bar and the flavor thing, okay. Now to get even uh, more real time, which means a uh, micro ki microsecond kind of a uh, real time, okay. Then you, you start using real-time hypervisor. Okay, I'll talk about uh, more on the real-time hypervisor. Okay. Now, somewhere in the middle of a microsecond, if you're talking about 10 microsecond, 20 microsecond, right, kind of a mic uh, order, then you need to enable some hardware-based uh, resource control. So real-time hypervisor. So real-time hypervisor supports uh, basically real-time guest, and then the way it handles is provides you know support uh, preemption support for real-time guest or processes. Okay. And also it has a real-time scheduling and interrupt handling. Okay. The example is like I said uh, the Linux with uh, preempt uh, RT configuration. Some, some people call it real-time Linux and plus KVM, okay? So like I said at the beginning, uh, we are working on the, this uh, real-time KVM. So you, we, we can use this one uh, for real-time hypervisor. So now I'll talk about more specific, uh, you know, setup for the uh, uh, OpenStack. So this is a summary of uh, uh, the setup. Um, it's a bit busy, but uh, basically start with the host aggregate. Based on your uh, real time requirement, I'll talk about the details more later. Then one thing is uh, the set, set up a boot parameters. Uh, this is something we run. You know, this is a, a bit painful, and I really want to share this thing with you uh, for architectural decision. Um, we actually need to uh, change some uh, boot parameters to reserve memory and then the CPU and and then also uh, for 
real time, you know, if you want to achieve a microsecond of a um, latency, you need to have a real time uh, hypervisor like uh, being a KBM, uh, real time KBM. Then I set up a novel configuration, then a uh, flavor, okay? So this is kind of recap uh, from the, the previous uh, files, if so, right? Uh, each box shows, the, uh, shows uh, host aggregate, okay? And the dots are basically uh, the host, okay? Then this one is that the host with the real-time hypervisor, okay? So as long as you use the, the same host, the same Linux configuration, uh, if you change the boot parameter to reserve CPU or memory, okay, you can continue, you can use uh, just the Nova to define uh, uh, L1. L1 is basically the millisecond of our real time, okay? And essentially this is uh, equivalent to what the Ironic is doing. So I, I believe if you, you are using Ironic, probably you might want to try this one because then you can use, you know, the virtualization, uh, uh, you, you can run that, uh, the instance on the real virtualization, and that way you can take advantage of, uh, you know, uh, more e efficient management, okay, of a virtualization, okay. Then if you go to R2, uh, you actually need to change the hypervisor. In that case, uh, you, need, you need to, de oh, oops, so, 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 what happened? Um, need to use, uh, you need to reboot. So, and sometimes uh, if you, you know, because you change the boot parameter, when you go, uh, go back L, L0 and L1, uh, you know, you also may, may need to reboot. So this is kind of a, a bit painful point, but I don't think you guys change this kind of configuration often, right? It's most, mostly static, and if you do, probably you just extend rather than change the kind of partition. But uh, if you design uh, the, the kind of, a, you know, these host aggregate efficiently, that, that's good. This is a more details, so well, I, I, I just skip this one. Okay, uh, this is a boot parameter. Uh, I'll share this for anyway, so probably you, you know you don't need to you know, take a picture. I'll, I promise. Okay. Uh, so this is a, from a Linux kernel, uh, you know, parameter. Uh, maybe some number you know, but you, you don't know. That's fine. Okay. By doing this, you can uh, uh, basically reserve uh, CPUs for real-time gas, okay? Also, you can reserve a memory for real-time gas. That's something you can do uh, with this one, okay? So this is uh, how you set up a host aggregate. So you, for example, you create a, aggregate, a host aggregate for L1 and L0, and uh, there is a keyword, for example, RT, equal true for L1, uh, L0 is non-real time, is uh, RT equal false, okay? And then you essentially you add the, those holes to the each aggregate, okay? Then in a Nova uh, configuration, you reserve the system resources, right? And then you use the, the BCP in set to point, you know, I think something is wrong, sorry. Hmm. Maybe some, I put some uh, button. Um, so remember that, uh, just a moment, uh, this one, okay. We deserve CPUs using ISO CPUs, right? Then those CPU, need to match 
the numbers here, okay? This means, so the, the, the VCPU set means you use the processors you reserved for the host, okay? This way, um, the usual uh, Nova uh, gas doesn't use the CPUs you reserved, okay? So it's kind of exclusive. So if you reserve at the ISO CPU, then for real-time gas, you set those here. This way, you can use the reserved processor for this one, okay? And also uh, specify no CPU over subscription, okay? And then no uh, over um, memory subscription, no memory over comment, okay? The other thing is I.O., like NIC, right? If you're using a, a Ironic, of course, that uh, NIC is uh, attached to the physical machine, right? So you can do the same thing with uh, using a Nova OpenStack today. So you can reserve, for example, some certain NIC or in a virtualization called SRB, right? The SRB has so-called a virtual function they look like a device, and you can reserve for, for some of the uh, virtual functions um, for a real-time guest, okay? So you can do this today. Um, the PC, so I just uh, talk about this one. This is the, the PCI device you reserve, okay? And then this is a keyboard. Uh, for path through, okay, then set up a flavor, okay, for real time. Those are already there, so you can take a look uh, there. And then, uh, for example, that uh, the policy dedicated, right, and isolate, and then the memory here. Then also this one is, uh, remember that RT equal to this one, and then also you, if you specify NIC, you can do this, okay. So the, this is uh, kind of a, I mean, uh, I, um, all set up for the, uh, the open stack. So with that, I want to conclude my presentation. So like I said, OpenStack is ready uh, for building real-time cloud. And uh, as I mentioned, you need to work on a flavor, Nova configuration, and if you necessary, if you want to achieve like um, L2, where you, you want to achieve microsecond kind of a uh, real-time, then you need to have a real uh, RT5 advisor, okay? And Designed at the host aggregate uh, to reflect different uh, real time requirements, right? And then we used actually uh, Ironic to modify uh, the boot parameters, actually. And today, Ironic can allow you to add the boot, just add boot parameters. So I think we need a tool to deploy and then uh, you know, manage multi-hypervisor uh, configuration, and that's, I think, uh, input to the architecture decision, okay. So with that, uh, I would like to take uh, uh, questions. Can you go to this? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, I have a question. It's not on. I have a question. Oh, yeah. I have a question on um, how you're dealing with hyper-threading in real-time systems. How do you deal with, uh, what, what do you mean, should you enable or disable? Yeah, could you, could you elaborate on any special bio settings or similar that you need to do? Hyper-threading uh, hyper itself doesn't cause uh, additional latency, but once you enable that, you have, a, you know, basically the number of CPU will be doubled. So that has uh, implication to the scheduler. So you, you may expose more 
scheduling issues uh, you know, with the scheduler. So I, I, th I think uh, from uh, our experiences, if you, you start with disabling uh, hyperbar, I mean uh, HD, that would be, I think, better. But then I think what I can say is uh, try, you know, enable H HT, how it changes. But like I said, with HT, you get more throughput, same thing, right, throughput. But that may cause some latency, that's true. It may expose a software issue, right, for example, the number of the vCPU processor will be doubled. So if OS uh, software has a loop for the processor, right, then it, it needs to, you know, um, cause more latency. Does that answer your question? Yeah, so it sounds like um, right now it's trial and error and see how it depends on your application workload. I think what I can say is uh, you have uh, more kind of risk if you enable HD. Thank you. So I, I assume you were talking about uh, not only networking but uh, CPU and other. Uh, you're creating a host aggregate, so why not just do for networking do SRIOV and create a host aggregate for that? So wh what is the real time hypervisor bringing? If oh, I still I think, have to create. Uh, so this is uh, basically the, the networking, right? That's uh, like I said, you you reserve uh, network SRB. Oh, so you are doing SRIO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, A and I guess the other question would be, why wouldn't you run RT uh, on all hosts? Is it just the cost then? Why why am I not running just uh, real time hypervisor on all computers? Yeah, this is the what I co covered at the okay. beginning. Okay, sorry. Ba base, you missed the first yeah, part? Yeah, oh, Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, I don't know out of time, but... Uh, but I, I get it. So it, it's, it's uh, basically, you know, it's the cost, right? A and what about live migration? So since we're creating, we lose the, all the advantages of live migration. So this is what I said. Basically, with the real time, you, you tend to you need more hardware resources because you avoid oversubscription, right? Or you don't share resources, right? right, right. And also, some scheduler, I think somebody also mentioned, like if you, you enable HT, um, it's basically throughput versus real time. Right. Sometimes if you achieve high throughput, you sacrifice, sacrifice real time or, okay. right? So that's uh, the mitigation I, you know, the proposed basically uh, suggested, right? You just make uh, part of your cloud real time. Okay, so this real time hypervisor is not a standard term, it's just uh, a term you're using or is it something that uh, is standardized, level one, level two, level, level Oh, okay, one. that one is not standardized, it's my terminology. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. Right. okay. And I, uh, I, I misunderstood that, thank okay. you. I got Just to I got make uh, the you know the explanation uh, okay. simpler, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, that's a question. Any other question? Just want to go to this. Okay, I think then. Uh, um, I'm done. Thank you.